I haven't had many experiences with angels. I've had a few, I'll tell you about them, but I had one this morning. I was so thankful for it because I just had been praying to the Lord that I would encounter him in a fresh way, something that would just lift my spirits and give me fresh momentum. So let me tell you what happened. I got up this morning and it wasn't a great night last night sleeping wise. I felt like I was dreaming, waking up, dreaming, waking up, dreaming, waking up. So it just didn't feel like I fell into a deep sleep, uh, just kind of that in and out activity. So I got up this morning and I have a prayer room at home with my wife, Cynthia. And that's the first thing we do every morning. I go downstairs to our prayer room and I play worship music and I just rest on the couch for a while. So this morning, as the worship music was playing, I fell into like a trance, like a sleep trance, but I was still hearing and cognitive of the music that I was hearing. And it was really, I could feel the presence of the Lord and the glory of God as it was, he was ministering to me as the music was playing. And in this dream, trance-like state, an angel walked into my prayer room. Now, I didn't see him with my eyes, but I saw him in the spirit, in my mind and in the spirit. It was really interesting. The angel was a black man. He was, you know, had black skin like an African. He was wearing all green, covered in complete green clothing. And it wasn't like a button down shirt like I have. It was more of like, uh, I, I guess the closest resemblance I could say in terms of the type of clothing that he had was something that you that you would envision Robin Hood wearing with kind of like a cloak and he had a and and the and the angel had like a green cap like you would see like on a sweatshirt hoodie all clothed in green and then he came over to the coffee table which is right in front of the couch that I was laying on and he gave me he put down there a bible and the bible that he put down was all covered in green. It had like a green a cloth cover to it. And it was almost like dainty like the way he was like putting the cover on, the, on, you know, making sure that it was laying perfectly on the Bible. And then all around the Bible that was covered in this beautiful green cloth type of cover material, there was like condiments, like just like look like almost like candies that, you know, sometimes I'll have like a chocolate piece of candy and it's wrapped up in like cellophane with two bows, a bow on each end. It, they, the condiments look something like that. And then it was over. And I was like, wow, when it was over, it was like, oh, wow, that was so beautiful. What did that mean? I was so blessed and just felt so good in my spirit. And, and as it was happening and I was listening to the music, you know, the music was really playing in my, in my prayer room there. I was actually listening to uh, John Thurlow, who used to be at IHOP, something I recorded on uh, from him a long time ago. Interestingly, I listened to that same CD every morning. Like, for, you know, I can't even tell you how many times I've listened to the same CD. It never gets old. But it was so anointed as I was listening to this, to it this time. And uh, I was just so, I was so thankful. And I thought, what did it mean, Lord? What were, what were you telling me? And I started thinking about, okay, why was the angel in green? Now, how do I know it was an angel? Well, I knew it wasn't Jesus. I knew it wasn't the Lord himself. And I knew it was from the realm of the spirit. And so I'm just assuming it was an angel. I really believe it truly was an angel. So I said, Lord, why, why did he come to me all clothed in green? And I recently did a teaching on, on the meaning of each color. In fact, you can look at it on one of my YouTube lives, the meaning of the colors. And green, it represents life. So I felt like the angel was sharing with me, you know, that he was ministering to me and he wanted me to receive new life from the word. And I also felt, beloved ones, that he was encouraging me and inspiring me to speak to you today from the Word of God. And so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing today. I've been inspired by an angel, and I believe the topic that is in my heart and has been in my heart for a few days is the topic of how to experience more of God's presence. What I'm going to be talking about in this YouTube Live is how to experience more of God's presence. So, Father, we just acknowledge you right now here with us. Father, we recognize your presence. Father, we thank you that you're always here, that you're I am, that you're living. And I pray, Father, that as I speak, 
that you would anoint my tongue and that I would speak words from the Spirit that would be blades of truth. God, that would enter into the souls and hearts and minds of your people and lift us up, O oh God, into your glory. Strengthen us by your truth, by your Spirit and by your word, that you would be glorified. Amen and amen and amen. How to experience more of God's presence. Listen, before I get right onto that theme, I want to share with you another revelation that came to me that I want to tie into it. You know, we all know the Lord's Prayer, right? Uh, that, that the Lord taught us to pray, Our Father that art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We all know the prayer. And it ends with, Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory forever and ever. Amen. The reason I wanted to bring that in right now is we have to understand that ultimately everything that we're aspiring for should be at the end of the day for the glory of God. So when we pray the Lord's Prayer and we pray, Lord, deliver me from evil, what do we say next? For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory. We're asking the Lord to deliver us from evil because He's God and He's Lord and He's light and He should be glorified, not the works of darkness and evil. And so as I share today, how to enter into more of God's presence. I want you to know that at the end of the day, it's not first about us, it has to be about Him. And so God wants us to uh, uh, um, be entering more into that reality that everything we do is for Him. But now to the point, how do we enter into more of God's presence? I know that many people that watch YouTube are younger. They're from a younger generation. I'm, I'm 65 years old, so, you know, YouTube's a little bit newer for me. Most of you grew up with it. I mean, it's like second nature to you. And so I'm speaking mainly, or at least in, in significant measure, to a younger age demographic. And let me tell you what I'm observing in the no younger age demographic and how that relates to the topic today of how we can experience more of God's presence. Today, what is foremost in the lives of many young people that consider themselves Christians, and I know I'm talking to so many of you right now, and when I say young, I don't mean just teenagers, I mean your 30s, your 40s, your 50s even, okay? So many of, of this generation, the, 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 the goal or that which they're seeking for is to experience God's presence, and predominantly they're seeking for it in worship services at church through music. And so you look, for example, at the lives of many people and they go to church and the primary thing they like about getting together with other believers is the worship service, when the worship band is playing. And there's something so sacred and so beautiful when God's people are gathered together in one place and the worship music is playing and, 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 and music is used by the Lord to release the Holy Spirit. So as the worship music is playing and we're singing to the Lord and glorifying Him with our words, we feel the presence and the peace and the beauty of what we call in Hebrew the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, and it is so beautiful and so refreshing and is so helpful. But the problem is that oftentimes we leave the worship service and just a few hours later, we're not feeling anything anymore. We feel disconnected from God. Our actions are disconnected from God. Our attitude is disconnected from God. And we're at a totally different place in the spirit than we were just a few hours earlier when the music was playing. So I wanna talk about how it is that we can experience more of God's presence when the worship music is not playing and when we're not gathered together with other believers all in unison together. How can we carry a greater sense of God's presence in our life? Now, I'm going to be talking about some things, and I, don't, I, I want you to stay with me because sometimes, beloved, the most helpful truths for us are simple. A lot of people are constantly going after the spectacular. You know, some new prophet has a word about what's going to happen in September, or what's going to happen in October, what's going to happen in November, what's going to happen in 2024, what's going to happen with the election, and all of a sudden the YouTube goes out and there's a million views. People are constantly going after the sensational. 
But beloved, the Holy Spirit most often speaks to us in a gentle wind. The greatest transforming truth is simple. I mean, how much more simple is it to really know that God loves you? If you and I really knew how specifically and personally and individually and in a detailed way, he loves us, he loves you, that would transform everything. So I'm just encouraging you, stay with me now. If you think I'm giving you some basic information, I'm gonna get more complex, but you need to hear some of this information because even though you think you heard it before, it hasn't got into us the way that it needs to in order for us to carry the weight of God's presence in our life so that we're aware of the fellowship that we have with Him, so that we're experiencing His presence. So how can we experience more of the presence of God? Number one, very simple, but I want you to stay with this. We have to recognize that God alone is ruling the world. God alone is ruling the world. In Hebrew, we call that Adon Olam. Adon Olam is a way of saying God is master of the universe. He is Adon Olam, the master of the world. Now, the reason that I'm saying that is that when we wake up every day and begin to walk through, our, through life that day, no matter what we encounter, we have to recognize that God is over everything we have to accept it from Him, and we have to have confidence that He's causing all things, according to the Word, Romans chapter 8, He causes all things to work together for good to those that are called according to His purpose. So you have to, to experience God's presence. If you all of a sudden get into a traffic jam, rather than just lashing out in frustration, you have to say, God, you're the master of the world. I submit to you in this. I'm not going to allow my soul to get into frustration, to get into anger, to get into accusation. I'm going to submit that you are ruler of the world. I'm going to subject my emotions to you. I'm going to subject my thoughts to you. I'm going to be anxious for nothing. I'm going to bless you. Your word says rejoice continually. And so, Father, I'm just going to accept this traffic jam that I'm in as coming from you, and now I'm going to use it to bring my soul down into peace, to love you, and to practice patience, and to practice peace. Because if you don't know that everything that you're walking through in life, God is Lord over, and if you don't submit to that lordship in all the challenges that you and I will face throughout our entire lives, if we don't learn how to do that, will never be able to enter in to the sense of His presence that we're looking for. You see, there's a difference between having a, an experience where you're continually having fellowship with God and experiencing His presence versus needing to go to a worship service and have the worship band play to experience God's presence. Both are manifestations of His presence, but one is just a short visitation in the worship service, but you don't want a short visitation. You want to have Him have a habitation in you so that you carry His presence with you wherever you go, and you become more and more aware of the power that you carry and the peace that you have, and that you're grounded in the truth and being grounded in the river of eternity. And so, I want to speak once again to those of you, you're primarily seeking to experience God's presence in the worship service at your church. We have to move beyond that. And the way to move beyond that, number one, beloved, is to submit yourself to the Lordship of God in your life, okay? Nothing that's coming to us is outside of God's divine design. God can use even bad things to accomplish good purposes. That's why the Lord says He uses all things. He causes all things, Romans 8, 28, to work together for good to those that love God and are called according to His purpose. So number one, to experience more of God's presence, you need to submit to His Lordship and recognize that He is Lord over the world and over every everything in your life. You have to trust Him that He's covering your life and that nothing is entering into your life that He is not allowing for a 
purpose. And the truth is that a lot of what God wants to do in your life, He can't do without bringing you through hard times. So you need to submit to Him in the hard times. You're looking to experience more of His presence. If you just want a little taste here and there, just keep going to the worship services at church and let that be the end of it. But if you want to walk in power and continual peace, you need to listen to what I'm saying. Okay, you're in a relationship with somebody, you need to be aware that God is watching you. He's watching how you're talking. He's watching your attitude. And you need to look to bring yourself into, into obedience and under that lordship in your life. Recognize, beloved one, His presence. Jesus taught this so clearly in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 21 and 23. Listen to what Jesus said. We're talking about entering in to more of God's presence. Jesus addressed it head on and listen to how simple he made it. A lot of us, we're running here and there. We're looking for the spectacular. We're looking for the next prophetic word. We're running to church services. But listen to what Jesus said is the way to experience his presence. John 14, I'm going to read verse 21 and 23. Stick with it, my friend. The most transforming truth is the simplest. The simplest is the most profound. Don't run from it. Don't be like those that the Bible says are running all over, rejecting sound doctrine because they want to have their ears tickled. If you, those of you that know the Word of God know that the Scripture says in the last days, men will no longer endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled. They'll accumulate for themselves teachers that will just stimulate them and all this falseness. So listen to what Jesus said. Here's the truth, the simple but profound truth. Yeshua said, He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved. Listen now. He who loves me, Jesus said, by obeying me. And I'm going to talk about what it means to keep God's commandments. But listen to what Jesus said. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him, Jesus said, and will disclose myself, or manifest myself, or reveal myself to him. So we're talking about how can we experience more of God's presence? Yeshua just told us how to do it. He said, if you will obey me, he said, I'm going to disclose myself to you. I'm going I'm to release the manifest power of my presence into your life and upon you. And you're going to be loved, he said, by my Father, and I will love you. Listen again. I'm not talking about earning salvation. I'm going to explain what this verse means in a second, because this used to really confuse me. Listen to what he said again. He who loves me will be loved by my Father. Does that mean that the Father only loves you if you love Him? No, because God's love is unconditional. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Why were we yet sinners? Christ died for us. But what it does mean is that until we're submitted to Christ by being obedient to the Spirit and the Word, we will not be able to experience God's love. I'm not saying we won't be loved by God. I'm saying we're not going to be able to experience this is what this message is about, how to experience more of God's presence. Until we have submitted ourselves to the Lord, we're not going to be able to experience the reality of how much He loves us. So we need to put ourselves in a posture where we can receive the expression of love that God wants to give us through the Spirit. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him, Jesus said, and will disclose myself to him. He continues with the 23rd verse here. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Okay, we're not talking about earning salvation. We're talking about submitting to the Spirit. We're talking about we sense the Spirit telling us something, leading us to do something, resisting something, taking a hold of something in the Lord. We're talking about obedience to the word of God by the Spirit. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. Okay, once again, we're not talking about uh, a works-based uh, righteousness. We're talking about being aligned so we can receive. And my Father will love him. And get this now. Get this. You tuned into this YouTube today because you want to know how to experience 
more of God's presence. Listen to what Jesus said. And we will come to him and make our abode or our home with him. Listen again. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. You're going to experience the love of the father experientially. I'm talking about the reality that God the father is alive and he loves you. And Jesus continued, and we will come to you. We will come to you. God said, if you draw near to me, I'm going to draw near to you. And we will come to you, Jesus said, get this now, and make our abode or our home with you. You see, if we're going to experience more of God's presence, we have to bring ourselves under the obedience of his lordship. And when we do that, the weight of the spirit settles upon our soul so that we can literally feel fellowship with God. We can feel the presence of God. We see the activity of God more often and more precisely in our life, but it all depends on obedience. I'm not asking you to be perfect. I'm certainly nowhere close to perfect. But what we are on, my friend, is a journey towards perfection. By perfection, I mean every day we're growing in obedience. Every day we're more and more yielded to the Lordship of God and the Spirit in our life. That we're being transformed because we are making it our goal in life to become conformed to the image of Christ, that we're being transformed by the Spirit, and the more and more we're transformed, the more and more we feel and experience God's presence in our life. It's called the law of similarity. You see, I can't experience what's going on in the um, mind let's say, of uh, some animal. Let's just, let's just pick a seal. I can't experience what a seal is experiencing because I'm not a seal. I don't think like a seal. I'm not a seal, period. But if I was another seal, I would be able to experience what seals in general experience. They can even communicate with each other in ways that we don't know. The same is true in our walk with God. The more we become conformed to God's image, the more we can experience his presence in our life. There is, beloved ones, no other way. You see, we have to clothe ourselves with his nature. Peter told us, clothe yourself with humility. And so this is part of what I'm saying about being subjected to the authority of the Lord. And so... I want to simply say that those of us who are hungry to experience more of God, we want His supernatural presence in our life. There's no shortcut to this. And if you just keep on running around from one place to another place where the Spirit of the Lord is moving, you'll be blessed when you go to those different places, but you'll keep on experiencing what you're experiencing now, my beloved friend. You'll keep on experiencing the truth that when you leave that place, when you leave that special meeting you went to or whatever it is, all of a sudden, you don't feel God anymore. See, there's a difference between a visitation and having a habitation. God said, if you'll submit yourself to me and obey me, we'll make our home in you. And so there's no shortcut. And nobody can get ahead of you in their walk with the Lord unless they yield to the Lord. Everyone's on the same playing field. There's only one way, whether you're a man or a woman, whether you're old or young, whether you're from India, Africa, Brazil, the United States, or Japan, it makes no difference. We're all on the same road. We have to die to ourselves, die to the flesh, die to the old nature. In other words, suppress the flesh and obey the spirit. And as we suppress the flesh, we don't let selfishness reign. We don't let anger reign. We don't let lust reign. We don't let our own fleshly appetites reign. We don't watch on television whatever we want. We don't listen to whatever we want. We don't lust after people. No, we subject the fleshly nature to the spirit. 
And how do you know what the Spirit wants, beloved? You have to be in the Word. You have to know the Word. Remember, I began today by telling you the angel came into my prayer room this morning. And what did he do? He gave me a copy of the Word. I mean, I already had a copy of the Word right there already, all covered in green. Green means life, right? If you don't know the Word, you're not going to have the discernment to know what's of the Lord and what's coming from yourself or from the powers of darkness. And so you have to know the Word. You have to discipline yourself to, to read the Word every day. When I was growing up as a young believer in 1978, I carried my Bible with me everywhere. Back when I was saved, it was the end of the Jesus movement. I was saved, you know, it was the, it was the Jesus movement had o was over, but the flames of it were still going. The, the, um, the smoke of it was still there. And as a young believer at 20 years old, going to Bible studies all over the city, we all brought our Bibles with us everywhere. You know, I had my pocket Bible in my pocket, my little New Testament. We were all about the Word. And I would memorize scriptures. I would pick out the scriptures that I loved. I would pick out the scriptures that I thought were weighty. I would pick up the scriptures that I thought God would, and I would memorize them. I'd say them over and over and over and over again. And I love memorizing the word. And it's still in me. People say to me, Rabbi, how do you do that? Because I spent all those years memorizing the word. And by the way, if you're young, do it now while your mind is sharper and you're more able to learn. You've got to know the Word, beloved. God's Word is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. We need to seize His Word and not let anything else in. So I want to sh share with you today, beloved, if you want to experience more of God's presence, stop the deception of running here and there. Jesus said the kingdom of God is neither here or there. He said the kingdom of God is within you. And go the way of truth, the straight and narrow way of truth. Jesus said straight and narrow is the way that leads to life and few there be that find it. You discover that way by the word and then you bring yourself under the obedience of the word and the spirit. And as you put the deeds of the flesh to death and overcome by the spirit because of your commitment to the word of God and your commitment to love God and your commitment to fear God, what's going to happen is you're going to experience more and more of God's presence. You can take that to the bank. You can keep going after the spectacular. You can keep on running all over, looking for the next prophecy. And it's amazing to me how people keep on listening to all these prophecies, even though the prophets they follow have been wrong so many times, it's ridiculous. Or you can take the simple, profound truth that came from God's Word that I shared with you today and put it to practice in your life. If you put it into practice in your life, you're going to bear fruit and you're going to bear it abundantly. This is Rabbi Schneider. Thank you today for giving me the privilege of allowing me to speak into your life. If you'd like to stay connected to me personally, you can sign up to receive personal text messages from me. There's information right now on your screen. The messages will come only from me, not a staff member. They'll come only from me and they will come in real time. And I also want to share with you today, beloved, everything that we're doing here at Discovering the Jewish Jesus, it all costs money. I'm getting ready in just another month to go to Uganda. I'm going to be doing a huge outreach on the ground in Gulu, Uganda. Then in January, I'm going to be going to Uganda again. Uh, so all the things that we're doing, the, the producing, the way that we're putting out the content, not only on YouTube, but television, radio, it all costs money. We're reaching so many people. And beloved, we can't do it without you. So if the Lord is blessing you and feeding you through this ministry and you feel him touching your heart right now to make a love offering to him through this ministry, I just want to thank you for your financial help. Without the help of the people of God sowing their financial support into this ministry, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. I love you, my brothers and sisters. Pray for me. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for my friends, for your sons and daughters that are watching right now. Father, I pray that the word that they heard would pierce deeply into their soul. Father, that the truth that's been spoken would bring, would bring about transformation to all of us, God, and that we would more and more look and have the fragrance of Jesus. Father, thank you that you're the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Complete the good work that you started in us, I pray. And beloved ones, I speak Father's blessing over you right now. When I sing over you, Yahweh, 
Vayishmarecha Ya'er Yahweh Panavelecha Vichu Necha Yisa Yahweh Panavelecha Ve'asem Lecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up by his countenance. And the Lord, my beloved brothers and sisters, give you more and more and strengthen you more and more in his peace with his presence.